udah 47 total 80 ya mbak <laughs> iya gimana bu mau ditunggu atau uh, mau dimulai Bentar, ini lima menit lagi five minutes more oke okay, boleh oke okay, menit lagi sambil ya, dicolek bu. aja bu sambil saya ini kontak bu Yuni <laughs> Uh, uh, Dr. Ruri, may I know that the student project now is in urban or rural? It's a, some of them is in urban and rural. So they oh. will, because it's a COVID time, so <laughs> they cannot go very far away. They will mm. choose sites that really near their houses and then it will be oh, worth it. Uh. Even, uh, and, and it will be, uh, yeah, divided by a group and also is um, what the, they will choose one of the uh, from the very nearest with their houses. So yeah, they, sometimes they will use the rural area, but sometimes also we can find uh, they will choose the urban area. Okay. But the Understand. most important things is in, in UNS, they will use for the, with the contour. So they will uh, really oh. go with the contour, how to manage the contour as a part of the design landscape. Mm. Okay, understand. So yeah. So okay. so, but in Indonesia, basically, when you get this uh site plan, um, is it uh easy for you to get the uh like uh Map. topo topography maps? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult, but then uh now the students can find from the Google. Yes, Google is one of the method. Mm -mm. That's right. <laughs> they they are searching from the Google if uh. Yeah, that's the basic point that we can uh, have it for the data. Mm, yeah. But um, the projects coming from the lectures and the lecture already have the complete data. They can share to the uh, students and they can uh, manage with that uh, basic data. Okay. Understand. But it's very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult. Yeah, and, and, understand. <laughs> but because we, we cannot do, um, I mean, from my parts, my experience, I think um, we cannot do expect like um, student must uh, get the information like 100% is correct but at least they exposed to what like um, they know where to get the information from yeah. the right uh, department like maybe like in Malaysia we call it uh, JUPEM uh, Jabatan Ukur so they can get the topography map from that so at least uh, the student have the to know the process yeah oh that's great from uh, that department mm -hmm. but um I'm not sure here which department we can have it the the the, the grid and then the original data <laughs> because if, if, uh, every time we come there and then they say oh we don't have it <laughs> <laughs> yeah as you should understand the, the students <laughs> okay okay thank you so shall we start now it's already 60 yeah yeah okay selamat pagi uh, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, buat adik-adik semua yang sudah gabung di uh, kuliah hari ini because yeah, I think this is international class so I should speak English yeah. Good morning everybody. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for our class. Uh, it's, this uh, even is a lecture series uh, for um, for the uh, from Department Architecture and uh, Department of Architecture Landscape uh, University of Technology Malaysia. Well, um, because this is the lecture series, so not only this time Dr. Lee will join uh, with our class, but uh, several times, uh, maybe we have still uh, two more class that uh, Dr. Lee become as a lecturer. And another professor will join us uh, in the mag magister program, Department of Architecture to do the international exchange class because this is part of the world class university program from international office, University of 11 Maret. So we hope uh, with this inbound program that the visiting professor coming to uh, University of 11 Maret, uh, we can have the exchange knowledge sharing experience. And in the future, we can have uh, more uh, uh, students collaborations, uh, research collaborations, and yeah, we should produce uh, one paper, Professor Lee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yes. yeah. 
Uh, actually, uh, the Department of Architecture, Urban, uh, Urban Rural Design and Conservation Laboratory already have a long history having uh, communication with Dr. Lee because on 2018, we joined one uh, summer, uh, not summer, design workshop in uh, Thailand with Dr. Yeah. Lee, along with Prof. Uh, Dr. Yosafat at the time, uh, one week, more than one week. Yes, more than one week. Yeah. We are with the Thailand and then having the workshop polyculture. Yeah. That happens before COVID, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two <laughs> no, years it's ago. <laughs> no, it's COVID time, so uh, we don't have any chance uh, to do make the colloquium, but uh, in the future, we can go visit uh, Malaysia and then we can have several activities uh, yes. along with the students from the UTM. And yeah, also because Dr. Lee graduated from the University of Tokyo, so we also joined, uh, here's uh, support also by the Japan uh, Cultural Study, PSJ in LKPM. Really hopes this uh, activity can be uh, very useful for all the audience here, and particularly our students in um, subject of architecture landscape. Uh, and then today's uh, moderator, Ibu Tiwi, are you ready there? Okay, I think Buti okay. has a uh, problem of technical problem. Yeah, okay. Okay. accompanied by uh, Ibu. Yes. <laughs> and also welcome for Ibu Dia and uh, as one of the part of the lectures of architecture landscape. Mm -hmm. We also still have uh, two more uh, lectures here, but I think not join us yet. Okay, uh, okay Buti. We have two hours uh, for today's lecture. Uh, I hope we have a fruitful discussion. Uh, time and place we uh, we give to you, both of you. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ibu Lee. Uh, hello. Uh, yes. Hello, Dr. Lee. Hello. Yes, uh, yes. Sure. Ibu yeah. Ruli. Uh, and hello, everyone. I am Yarsari. Uh, so, uh, uh, let me to lead this before we get would like to go over a few so you know how to participate in today's event uh, in order to avoid any disturbances during the presentation later i suggest you all to mute the microphone okay and i would like to explain how you can the webinar uh, so you will have uh, the opportunity to uh, submit text questions to today's presenters by typing um, your question in chat room. You may send in uh, your question at any time during the presentation. Yeah, We will collect this and we will have a question and answer session at the end to answer your question. Okay, um, today I would like to introduce our presenter, Dr. Leo Kalai. We are so lucky to having her here with us today. She is a senior lecturer in Faculty of Built Environment, Department of Architectural Landscape at University Technology Malaysia. Um, okay, so uh, uh, a little other design. There is a certainly a process that must be went through in order to be comprehensive design. cannot hear, hear from yeah. Ibu TV. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We have a problem of signal. Mm. Uh, maybe we can wait for uh, two or three minutes. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of the uh, common that... technical things. <laughs> I understand. Never mind. Another uh, the technical things of the uh, when doing uh, lectures like this. Mm. Ibu TV, are you still there? I think you have a technical program uh, of signal. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, Dr. Lee, I think it's okay uh, for you to start first and later we can... Uh, okay, sorry. I have oh, a trouble with my connection. Okay. Ibu TV is... Uh, yeah, she's okay, back. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, shall I start or? Uh, okay. uh, can you hear me clearly? Uh, yes. 
but but now it's like uh pending. Yeah, mm. uh, I think delay. Okay, okay. I would like to to turn off my my camera. Yes, so yeah. that I can uh, I can make a good connection. Okay. I can no make problem. it. Is it okay? <laughs> yes, yes. No problem. No problem. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can turn off. Uh, are you still there, Ibu Tiwi? Yes. Mm. Okay. 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 Uh, I'm so sorry for the trouble. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, langsung saja ya. I would like to introduce our presenter, Dr. Lee Yokelai. I have uh, uh, I have asked it before. Uh, a little opening from me in outdoor design. Uh, there is a uh, certainly process that must be went through in order to be a comprehensive design and so how do the process uh, and the methods employed by landscape architects impact the design outcome so uh, let's find out from our speaker today okay Dr. Lee uh, I'm sure that you are ready yes, <laughs> okay I'm have ready. a please doctor okay okay have a please bro yeah, th thank you for your introductions. Thank you, Dr. Luri and yeah, Ibu TV as well. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, selamat pagi. Um, and thank you for all um, uh, lecturers uh, like Ibu uh, Dai, da, is it correct? And also and others, uh, students who joined these uh, sessions. Yeah. Okay, I will share my slide. Um, before to start, um, I would like to introduce uh, myself. Uh, I'm Li Yuk Lai uh, from the Landscape Architectures uh, Department or Program. So now we call it as a program in UTM instead of department. So I'm from Faculty of Built Environment and Surveying, University Technology of Malaysia. And I'm from the Research Group of Urban Design and Environmental. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm very happy and pleased that um, uh, Dr. Ruby has invited me to join this the Imba profession, uh, Professor pro uh, Program. So, yeah, just today I'm sharing uh, knowledge that what I've experienced on teaching in the, uh, the design process in the landscape architects. All right, okay, before I go to begin my uh, input, I would like to share some a little about like uh, the UTM uh, landscape architecture program. Our program, uh, we have established, I mean, I, we have begun with uh, just the landscape architecture department per se itself, independently since uh, 1993. Yeah. So before this, uh, our department, landscape architecture department is combined with uh, architectures, which means the landscape architecture department is part under architecture before 1993. So um, our program, we also uh, have like go through the review program. So the name slowly changed like from uh, Sajana Senebina Landscape and we changed the code uh, yeah, due to the uh, request by the uh, government, yes. So it's a four years program, basically. But before that, in 10 years ago, uh, this program is uh, conducted in five years. I think uh, 15 or yeah, years before. So most of our seniors, uh, alumni, they are graduated in five years. But now the student they are request only completed this program in four years. So basically, um, the studio, uh, uh, I think you understand the studio for the design from the lower year, year one until four, we have the different team. Uh, same like in uh, UNS, in the final year, you uh, have to conduct your own uh, independent projects. Okay, I think that's all some little intro from the UTM part. If you have further more questions, uh, maybe later you can ask me about like a, a landscape architecture program in UTM. All right, uh, without further ado, I will start the uh, little intro about the landscape architecture. So it is might be a general for you, or maybe some of you might be think is a new for you. Okay, but anyway, I will just share. So basically, uh, when we 
talk about landscape architectures, uh, the study is very broad, yeah? It's a combination of designing in the, uh, outdoor and indoor, yeah? So this disciplinary is a combination of art, environment, architecture, engineering, and sociology. Because landscape project is not only planting a trees, yeah? Our scope is uh, vari varieties, yes. We can start with a very small project like uh, in a courtyard and extend as big as a regional landscape projects. All right. So as I said just now, the landscape architect itself, uh, design of space, uh, important in dealing with space making. Yeah. If compared to architect, uh, yes, you have your own uh, space making as well, but most probably are in indoor. But now I believe landscape architect and architect is work also closely, right? We are dealing with all the spaces in between the building, okay? So um, the involvement of landscape architect, as I say just now, our scope is huge, yeah? Maybe, um, yeah, when we look at, at like in, in Malaysia, now we can see like the extension of the projects of the landscape uh, is not only focused on the housing area anymore, right? It can, can extend until like the regional uh, scale, such as the park or national park, or also the town scale project, okay? So this is basically just a little introduction about what is a landscape architecture or the landscape architect uh, do, yeah? Uh, the important roles that contribute to the uh, our built environment. Okay. Uh, okay. So I post the first questions here. Uh, what is the landscape architecture design process? Mm, if you browse to your Google, yeah, you can browse to your internet. You will find that um, basically, uh, you can say that uh, does it similar to architecture's design process? If you ask me, I think the process is same but the context might be different, right? When I say the context is different, like the, the skill is different because architecture is dealing more on the context, like, yeah, uh, the building itself and the context surrounding the building. Uh, but landscape architecture, uh, architecture design can extend more than uh, a boundary of the building itself. So basically uh, the design process, uh, we will start with the survey and the concept the detailed design, the constructions, and end by the completion of work. This diagram on the right of this uh, slide is just to show you the idea. What we have practiced in the school is similar to what we are going to practice in the real world. So that's why we are exposed to the student, um, the real practice of as a landscape architecture, yeah? So what you learn from the school is doesn't mean that uh, something uh, is on very academic. It could be applied when you are in the real working world, yeah? Okay, uh, I'm, I'm sharing on this is, uh, I, I got it from a journalist uh, talking about a design process, a comp comparison in the landscape architectures. So when you look at this uh, table, yeah, you will see like the famous uh, urban design or the lens architect or landscape architect, you found that like uh, Sasaki, uh, Lynch or Riba or Lawson, they, they here they were putting out, uh, okay, what to do with the landscape design process. You will see the very similar words, yeah. Like the, the first step have to do a survey, research, analysis, synthesis, and then the product master plan. So that's why in the first slide, I will say that architecture, landscape architecture, we have the same common uh, process. It's just, we will look at what are the context of inventory and analysis, all right? So I will move to the next. Okay, uh, all right. This is the stages of the landscape architecture design process. Uh, this is what I have summarized based on my experience here. Um, I, you can go more very in detail when come with the framework of the chart, but I try to simplify it because to make the second year student more easy to understand, right? Yeah, begin from the landscape architecture process. Um, the first thing you have to think of like is uh, to conduct a site inventory and analysis, yeah? So basically is to collect a data. So I will discuss more on 
this uh, later. Um, followed by uh, to obtain uh, a client brief or dealing with the stakeholder, which means when you do a site inventory analysis, you go to the site, you will uh, interview your client, or you will communicate with the local community. So this is a must for the landscape uh, architecture design process and the survey. So the two process that you go through uh, on the site inventory and also dealing with the, your client. And then you will start to think of the concept or conceptual development. Yeah? So this is what you happen in your studio, right? Um, when your lectures, they give you a de design requirement. So you have to produce a, a concept and you need to do some research of the topic that you are given for the studio. So basically, um, the student have to refer on the each team of the studio, or you have the sub team like given by your uh, lecturers. Yeah. So once you have clear what to do with your clear directions, uh, when you come up with your design uh, concept brief, writing the brief, the conceptual development, and also the program activities. So in, in I want to highlight here, in, in the landscape architecture's design process, it's very important to design uh, activities. Yeah, because uh, landscape architecture always deal with spaces. Yeah, so provide an activity and program is a must. Yeah, especially for the space making. Dr. Lee, sorry. Yeah. I think, uh, there is an air from your make. Maybe you can put your uh, make uh, on the chin so it's a bit more uh, clear. That's your voice. Uh, because the make. So you can put on the chin. Oh. And then, okay. Then, okay, okay. because the air, uh, uh, bit, the sound is a bit, um, bit more greasy. Gra so, oh, how about this? Okay or not? Um, a bit more up. <laughs> up? Okay. Yeah, because it's a bit small. Oh, you mean my voice is uh too too small? Yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry, I will increase my volume. Yes, it's better. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> how how about this? Is it okay? I think I, I have think... to speak up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I think... We very sorry. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you very much, Dr. Lee. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you. So, uh, so uh, yeah. Okay. I will back to the just now I mentioned the conceptual part. Let, let me repeat on the program and activity. Yeah. So, in landscape architectures, a space making is very important. Uh, I'm mentioning about especially the outdoor space making. So when we think about the design concept here on the third uh, stage, yeah, uh, design a uh, activity or a program is a must, yeah. Okay. So when you do a uh, conceptual parts, uh, normally we will ask students to find a reference study or in another in another terminology you can use like a precedent study something that you can refer uh, like a successful project that you can refer so that is a guideline for you to get um, some idea to start with to uh, write on your conceptual or think about your conceptual when you have the idea of this yeah uh, you can next to establish your goal and objective for your project your studio project your design yeah so basically um uh all the process will help you to produce on the communication part that's why i put in in the landscape uh, design process here uh the requirements of the output yeah is master plan detail area plan detail constructions and build of quantity so I think the master plan and detail area plan is familiar from you. I think, yeah, um, in different skills. So uh, normally the master plan skill is like for landscape can be up to, for lower year, we will request like 500, one to 500. And for upper years is like one to 1,000 or 1,750. One, uh, detail area later, I will show you an example. is a blow up from the master plan. Yeah, for your information, the landscape architecture students, they have to do a detailed constructions as well. I think similar as like architecture uh, students, yeah, you have to do a technical drawing, okay? And end up with the bill of quantity. But this one, we were requested in for the student of the final year, yeah? Mm -mm. 
uh, which means a costing for the project. Okay, I will move to uh, next slides. Okay, uh, I'm asking just now for uh, is uh, what what is the purpose of you for doing a, a site survey, right? So now, where to collect a primary and secondary data? Mm, okay, later you can let me know. I think I will believe that this is not a jargon word is familiar for you, a primary and secondary data. Uh, as a studio master, as a lecturer in the studio, we always guide students uh, have a desk script, we call it, uh, which means you will help students to, you, you have to start with a second data before you go to the site, because why? Uh, with, as, with preparation of this data, at least you can know or familiar with the site first. Because I believe that uh, you cannot go to the site survey straight away without understanding the site background. At least you get some info from the uh, secondary information. So what basically you, uh, you can get the source is from like the local plan, uh, the reports, the maps, the books, article and the website. Yeah. So which means the student can independently do their study before go to the site. And what happened to uh, when you go to the site, you have to conduct the survey. So we call it as a primary data. So um, I think for lower years, uh, uh, this uh, few of this uh, survey is uh, suit to you. Yeah, because we did ask the second year student to do something like this, uh, a very basic interview survey, a question uh, survey as well, site observation, mental map and cultural mapping. So at least you will have to start a very basic of to do some, uh, I can call it a little technical part. So uh, it's help you because when you judge on what you do on the site, if you just judge by your own, it sounds like bias, right? So if you have some supportive data or information from the community, from your client, which is good enough. So yeah, so this will help you to strengthen your uh, site brief, okay? Uh, I will move to the next, yeah. Okay, how, how to differentiate the inventory analysis and synthesis? Um, okay, if for landscape architecture design process, uh, this is not uh, new for us, but uh, for architecture, I believe also, yeah. But how to differentiate? Um, I, I want to make it simple here. When you talk about inventory, is a uh, collecting a uh, data, a uh, collecting of uh, information. When you talk about analysis, is more on how to evaluate on the information that you get from the site visit or the field studies. Okay, so the combination of inventory and analysis, then you have to come up with the suggestions. Um, for my experience, um, my students. Uh, especially the lower year, they always confuse inventory and analysis. Student, uh, is, students are good in doing inventory. You can collect a lot of information from the site, from the secondary data, but without analysis. Why? Um, as simple as the question that I can say here, or I can ask you, right? Uh, if I ask, if you judge like, okay, I go to the site and I see this and that, okay, you record everything. But this, you will ask yourself, did you do any analysis? Because you only done the inventory part without analysis. Analysis is something that you have to judge like, to evaluate, yeah? To assess, uh, is that good or bad? As simple as that. So you have to ask yourself. When you have said, said that, um, it doesn't mean that you have to do it on the site because you are busy with the uh, field work, right? You have to do observation, but you can do, you, you can do the uh, analysis part when you back to the studio or you back to your home, right? So uh, maybe later I will show you some example what is actually analysis, yeah? Yeah. Um, I believe that for architecture and landscape architectures, we don't uh, write only everything like just a essay or a thesis. Uh, we have to produce a lot of map or infographic yeah, to help us yeah, to understand. Okay, synthesis is a must because without a synthesis, you cannot start with your concept. Yeah, it's a solution. Okay, uh, I will move to the next. Okay, 
uh, this is uh, the checklist. Uh, it is not say a common, but I will prepare to the student for only lower year. For upper year, I won't prepare the list because it's just to guide the student. But sometimes I will see the student creativity, whether uh, the student can prepare their own checklist before I come up with my own checklist. Yeah, it's just to see how students are managed to get. Okay, you can ask me like, mm, huh, where, where should I get all these checklists? It is true reading. Yeah, it's through your precedent study, it's through your reference study. Okay, I, 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 I prepare this, this is a two slide here, the list, I call it the factors. Okay, uh, this uh, list is for reference for second year students for, for in UTM, yeah, uh, when they do uh, urban projects. Okay, so basically when to start a uh, a simple or to begin an initial site inventory. Um, the site context, uh, land use uh, and zoning is, uh, I think is a basic, you, you must understand, yeah? So you, you can prepare this, it's a, like a checklist, so you can write a main topic, what you have to look at, yeah, in this column. And in the middle part is more on the subtopic. And the third is the method. Okay, I, I we we go through the first one. Huh? When we start with talking about the land use pattern, I think this is familiar for you, maybe. Ah, uh, okay. The land use pattern is uh, standard. Yeah, we can refer to the uh, mm, the the planning, uh, urban planning uh, guidelines. So, uh, if you see, yeah, landscape architecture is not stick to the landscape itself on the three parts, like a plan of vegetations. We refer to architecture, we refer to the planning guideline. So yeah, it is a mix, yeah? So when you list all this, then you know you know what to do. So basically, uh, we have this site context, uh, accessibility and circulations. So you can see that um, study on the circulation is not on just on the street hierarchy. We can go, uh, it's not just a pedestrian hierarchy, which like you go to the side, you see, okay, the street is okay, fine, good. Uh, the connection is not there, yeah. But when you come to the urban design itself, you can develop more, right? You can put in like the lynch idea on study on the urban. Let's say you can put in like on a permeability study, legibility study. Yeah. So you, you just list what you want for your study. Hmm? So what I want to share here is, um, of course, you can start with a very basic. Uh, when you have a map, uh, you need to know what to study and just come out with a very simple topic like accessibility and put in some attributes on in this uh, uh, table, yeah? Uh, there, there is no right or wrong. It's how much information that you're, you're understanding from a theory and put it in the table, yeah? Okay. Um, beside a site context and accessibility, it's important in the landscape uh, architecture uh, survey site studies. Um, for me, uh, the place history and also the background of people and activities is very important. As I said just now, the landscape design is important for the placemaking. So activity dealing with community is the must, yeah? Okay. Um, so basically, uh, you can refer to the right here. Um, you, uh, based on your creativity, you whether you can do it on what you want, like site observations, video record or mental map or cultural mapping. Yeah. Uh, think something that which one is easy for you to record the data, analyze, and you can put it on your uh, design on the paper. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number four, the aspect that is important also in the landscape study is about the green spaces, natural habitat and vegetations. Okay. Um, when we talk about the green spaces, uh, there is a typology of spaces, which like, if let's say you have an area, you will look at the spaces, you can list out the spaces first, yeah? And then um, doesn't mean that um, for this part, most uh, information you can get it from the secondary information, which means that when you go to the site, it's just for you to check whether it's correct or not, yeah? So of course the river water quality uh, forest all is part of this under this topic yeah mm. 
Okay, maybe you can ask, you will ask like, how to look at the wildlife itself? Yeah, of course, like I told my student that if you go to the site, sometimes um, it's not easy for you to look at the wildlife, like right? the, the animals uh, on the site, like in rural or urban area. So what you can get is like, try to get the secondary information or the reports. So at, at least any previous study, they have mentioned about uh, the wildlife uh, in or uh, related to uh, in one area, okay? So the, the product that you have can produce in the yeah is a, like ecological map or any observation studies. Okay, so number five uh, is the building. So in the urban area, in the rural area, uh, I think the settlement, the building is there. So this one is familiar for you. So I'm not going to um, uh, elaborate more. Yeah, type of building, all this. Uh, yes, landscape, architecture, student, uh, we have to do this as well, yeah. So uh, the interesting part, when you study a building, uh, don't just uh, look at the physical part. You can put it like the study on the building as a landmark, a notes of focal point. I think this will make your studies more interesting, okay? Mm, yeah, of course, when you talk about building, uh, 3D uh, perspective is very important when it comes to your site inventory analysis, okay? Uh, for the landscape architecture studies, also include here are the microclimates and the visual. Uh, this is very important because we, been, we talk about outdoor, uh, thermal comfort is important uh, because the design when the space for people need to overcome or to combat uh, the, uh, the, the thermal comfort or the climates. Yeah, uh, doesn't mean that um, we have to, we can 100% deal with the issues, but at least you know what are the issues that highlight on the site. Yeah, if you say the temperature is high, so what you have to do? Yeah, if there is a flood, so how to uh, collect the data and show the evidence. I, I will share the one of my final year student project later about the flood uh, studies. Okay. Um, visual is very important. Yeah, in uh, visual and also streetscapes uh, studies because uh, this will help you, especially on the uh, aesthetic part when you do a uh, design on the landscape and also the visual legibility, yeah? Um, because when we talk about visual, it will guide a user, yeah, uh, to, uh, for a directions or the legibility of one area, okay? As I say, uh, this table, I have seven content here, the list here, it is not a fix. It depends on your creativity. You can list more than that. If your it depends on your project. If your project is complex, so you will list more. Always think about that. No standard uh, survey list. It's always depend on your project. Yeah, this is you have to bear in mind. Yeah, that's why if student ask me, mm, can you give me the factors? I say no. You have to come out first. After you come out, I uh, the list. Let me check. And I think something lacking, I will help you to add. So if I give the student directly these seven aspects, they, they will just look at, they won't think what they will do on the site. So at least you have, uh, at least the student, they try to do some reading and they find out. So uh, they will be more independent yeah, when they go to the site. They won't read you what to do next and next, okay? All right, um, if you have question or, or questions later, yeah, Dr. Ruli, uh, Ibu TV. So I just go next, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can ask me again later if you are not clear, yeah. Okay, um, from the process uh, of site inventory analysis, you have analyzed book, uh, whether the uh, criteria that you look at the site is good or not. So uh, the potential or constraints, uh, the, the very simple analysis method is using sort analysis. I think this is, I hope that this is familiar for you as well, right? When you talk about sort analysis, um, each of, okay, for your information, each of these factors, you can do your individual sort analysis. 
Can, can you understand me? Which means that, okay, you can do a sort analysis for site context. You can do a sort analysis for accessibility. You can do a sort analysis for place and history, as well as visual or microclimates. You can go it by single, yeah? It's look, you have many words, but it make you easy. Why? Because when you uh, back to a uh, sort analysis, you know what is the strength of your site inventory and the weakness of the site, the opportunity that you will see the aspect from the site and the threats from the site, yes? It just make you clear, as simple as that. I will give you an example, okay? Um, the example here is uh, a vegetation. It is the common uh, in landscape architecture. Uh, it's a survey of uh, trees uh, in an uh, urban area. So this project is in Pataling Jaya, Selangor, uh, Malaysia. So we can see the layout. This is a mix of uh, light industrial and also a housing area. Okay, so students, they go to the site. They do an inventory, they record manually on the paper, and they use the uh, uh, GPS uh, to record the location of the trees. They, they get the uh, location, yeah, uh, GPS. And then when they back to the campus, they plot this map. Uh, I think they will use uh, uh, GIS and also and with the Photoshop yeah, to produce. Okay, just look at this uh, map here. It's a composition of the layout of the tree. All right. If you just do inventory, you are putting the trees where the location, right? When you start to think about analysis, you uh, analyze type of tree and the planting. Yeah, structural planting here, which means the tree. The mass planting means the uh, small shrubs, yeah? is not tree. So you can see which part area is shaded, which part is not. Therefore, in the analysis, you look at the uh, right, the student, they can come out also with the condition of the trees. When they do analysis, uh, sorry, they, when they do the inventory on the site, they will see that um, how the tree conditions uh, on the site. So they will differentiate with the like, uh, the tree is in good condition, they put it excellent. So you can see that um, 40% of the trees at the site is in good conditions, right? So this is an analysis map. You can combine inventory and analysis map together, yeah? So the synthesis, the suggestions. Okay, when you look at the uh, analysis part, yeah? It, it, so what is the solution? What is your recommendation, yeah? When we talk about synthesis. So your recommendation is, Okay, let's say we look at the red line here, is the lack of vegetation. So what is your solution? Mm. But um, for students, probably they will suggest like, maybe they need the more uh, strict tree to be planted in this area, yeah? Okay, like uh, this, the highlighted the condition, if the tree is in bad condition, what they have to do. So the suggestion should also put on the maps, yeah? Not everything have to put on the writing, but with a simple as the maps, yeah? Okay. All right, this is the uh, sort analysis part, as I say. So once you have done your analysis map, the synthesis map, yeah? And then you can put the information on the sort analysis, all right? So, uh, we, we talk about the vegetation, right? The trees and the shrubs. So you know the site here, the strength is something positive. What is good about the uh, analysis on vegetations? So when you write on the sort analysis, make sure the simple, uh, write only in the simple sentence. Don't make it complicated because when you write in two lengthy sentence, you will not understand, make it simple. So when you write on the strength, all this uh, sentence should be in positive, in a good conditions, right? Have a potential, everything when you read is good. Okay, when you come to the weakness, let's say the, the dead trees can tarnish, lack of beautiful. So something that negative, here the weakness. Opportunity, opportunity, something is good as well. So what can help? 
So strength at its weakness, you can judge on the side. Opportunity and, and threats is something that you can think after when you do your uh, analysis. So basically, opportunity and threat is something that you can suggest. Mm -mm. All right. So you can see in other perspective, what is an opportunity for the site. All right. Always remember, write it in the simple sentence. No need too complicated. So you can easy to understand. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, the, the process of uh, landscape architecture design process, uh, as I say here, um, today I share uh, just a very important parts on this uh, inventory analysis and synthesis because I believe that without a good uh, synthesis idea, you cannot move on on the conceptual and also produce a good master plan. Because why? Without a synthesis idea, uh, you don't have a clear direction where you want to go. Um, sometimes we will find that in a studio, um, we have, let's say, 60 students. How are we going to uh, guide our students? They should work in the different team, different theme, yeah? Uh, you will find that, okay, 60 students is a lot. Does they have to do a same team in the project? Which means that you have a rural uh, project for your studio. Does they have to use the same concept? Let's say uh, one of these, the student, they are used on green infrastructure. Does they need to go, do, go to the one directions? Yeah, that is what the, our question here. So uh, if your site inventory analysis, you have your own approach. Some of the students, they will see like in the sort analysis, they will see the potential much more in different team. Let's say some student, they will think is more, okay, maybe this project is more on arts solution. So I will go that, yeah. And this project is maybe more on environmental solution. So I will go another team. So you will find that in the studio, students have their own creativity should suppose is that. So we as a studio master, I think we, we have to guide them on that. If not, the 60 student, they will do all the same idea, the project. Yeah, that, that's why the process is very important. From this stage, we already know, we can see which direction of the student they want to go. Yeah, okay. All right, um, basically I, I have finished uh, the part of on the theory of the process. Now I'm going to show you uh, some of the maps that uh, my student have produced. So at least you can see maybe some of the idea you can do it, apply in your studio as well. Okay, all right. Uh, example like a mental map. Uh, okay, this is my second year studios. Uh, they went to the site uh, one day. Uh, in Kuala Lumpur uh, for Urban Studio. So uh, basically, I will brief the students. Um, okay, you have to do the site uh, inventory based on your own feeling. You go to the site. So what you see. So you learn on the um, important vocab in urban studies. So when you have to jot down what you see physically, you have to draw it in the mental map. So this is one of the survey on, uh, yeah. So I think uh, maybe for you, you, you can try to do this. It is good because uh, at least what student observe, you can straight away to do it on the map. Uh, uh, this student can do it uh, straight away uh, on the side. Yeah, a mental map, as simple as that, okay? All right. Another uh, example is like um, a, a sketch, yeah, on visual part. Uh, uh, this one is the example that I mentioned just now. When you do a accessibility study, um, not only just focus on, okay, uh, this area you have a busy road or not, the condition, the pathway is good or bad. Yeah, try to look at more detail like legendary study, permeability study, yeah, you will see that uh, student, uh, if you give them like, okay, try to look at legendary study and they will sketch uh, with, uh, guided by the map, uh, with their opinion, 
and put in some theory, you will see that the student understand or not. Because sometimes when you ask them to just read what is legibility, they will just look at the theory from the book. But they went to the site, they will see the building, the uh, element, the people, then they will describe on the map. This is one of the study, yeah, the legibility study, yeah. Uh, Okay. Uh, the student itself, uh, when they go to the site to uh, to do the pre reserve, they also before they go to the site, as I said just now, uh, they prepare a secondary information first, which means before they go to the site, they will prepare. Okay, if I do a legibility uh, study on quality studies, uh, I will look at the path, notes, landmark, age, and district. So they, they will put all this, the description here, and then they will mark which area they want to cover. Yeah, there is a guide. So this is on student creativity, what they're going to do, uh, the checklist for them. So you can prepare something like this, yeah? Okay. Um, this, this is something uh, important for the landscape architectures uh, uh, study also. Um, when we talk about thermal comfort, um, basically we have to do to, to measure the temperature on the site. Um, in our program, we have a site planning uh, subject as well. So students uh, have to uh, attend a lectures. They, they were trained how to use uh, tools to measure the temperatures. Uh, normally students will record, they will have uh, study uh, to collect all these uh, temperature followed by the point. So from here, it will help that to determine which area is high temperature because of what? Because of density of the building, the busiest roads that influence the hot, uh, hot, uh, how high temperature in this part. Um, more comfort or slightly warm because this is more like, uh, have more vegetation compared to this part. As you all know that uh, doing a site inventory analysis is much more on showing an evidence in a simple words. You can always ask you yourself and uh, a lecturer can always remind the student, uh, what is your evidence when you say this area is very hot? Uh, what is your proof when you say that this area is not too bad or slightly warm? Yeah, just, just show all this evidence, yeah. This is more uh, slightly technical, but it's very impactful yeah, to support your uh, inventory analysis. Okay, another interesting, when we're talking about uh, landscape design, we also talk about the sound, yeah? Something because uh, it's dealing with human, yeah? Uh, th this is some also technical parts. Uh, well, when we do a design, it's very important, especially the outdoor, yeah? Some places is suitable for this project or design proposal. Some are not. Uh, maybe the sound will help give the impact to the design area. So because this area is a mix of light industry and housing, that's why you will find that uh, here, the outer link uh, of the uh, area here, the urban area, uh, very, very high of some noisiest voice because near to the main road. So in the inter part, it's more on the housing. That's why it's more quiet. Mm -mm. Just, just a showing and evidence, yeah? This is interesting. So maybe you, you can try next time, yeah. Uh, you can use the uh, tools of the sound record. Mm. Um, some of my students, they also use a uh, handphone. I think there's some apps you can easily install to your handphone and get uh, to measure the sound level. So you end up, you can do an analysis map and plot on the, as simple as this, yeah. All right, uh, I think you are interested on this, the landform and spot level. Okay, uh, since uh, now during the COVID, right, everyone is at home, you can do it as simple as uh, the landform study. Uh, as simple as is like you come out with the sections first, yeah. To look at the profile of the landform uh, is very important, yeah. Especially, especially you want to design to look at the level. Does this, okay, when we talk in the landscape architecture design, we always try to preserve 
the le level, not to change, right? Mm, because to preserve the natural topography. Okay, so since you're at home, so try to come up with a simple sections, like a cut sections to the whole side. You can see it in the elevation way, or you cut in the middle of the area that your study area, as simple as that. Um, another method is you have to get it some information, a topo map from a government office like uh, we have in Malaysia, like Jabatan Uko, the student can get the contour line for the area. Okay, for your information, if your site is small, uh, normally you cannot get um, the impact of the contour you cannot see, but at least you try to get some spot elevation. So just now Dr. Ruri mentioned that you can get from the Google, yes, there is also another method. You can get from the elevation, at least you plot which one is the higher, which one is the lower area, as simple as that. So in landscape architecture, the landform studies, or we call it as a spot elevations, is very important because why? We want to see the, like, uh, the rainwater uh, runoff and also the waterways uh, runoff area. Okay, which means that when you see the landform itself, right, where is the potential? Uh, does it affect by the flood or not? So all this information will help, doesn't is focus on the, okay, I only study landform, no. All this study you will find that they are related to each others. When I study landform, it's related to the water body. When I study landform, maybe it's related to aesthetic. Uh, you don't afraid that there is a, how to say a connection or the linkages uh, uh yeah you you don't say that okay landform is landform no you always will see the landform with the aesthetic the landform with water bodies all right uh, later i will show you the one projects on the flood so this is more simple for for second year student at least um they know the profile of the site with a simple cut sections with the labeling of the level and what is the profile of the city itself. And you can come up with the 3D maps if you're able to do to, to see how the uh, topo of the site. Okay, uh, another example here um, is familiar for a landscape uh, architecture study is a streetscape appraisal. Okay. This method, uh, you need to snap a lot of photos because by observation will help you to uh, experience and see how the streets and the conditions. So this method, like you can see that student have labels a lot of number. Maybe you see, oh, why? How come so many numbers? The numbers here is the guide of the visual, the photos, yeah? uh, create a different experience. Yeah. This is just some uh, example. Maybe you can explore. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, from the streetscape uh, studies, as I said just now, a uh, visual study is very important to the landscape. It's not only showing the quality of a good picture that you show, which one is good view and bad view. Yeah. Okay. I will show you this first. Students, they will come up with the analysis of visual quality. Uh, okay, where do they get this? They get um, a criteria from uh, by referring from the journal. Let's say uh, what to determine a good view. So good view, maybe uh, the building condition should be okay. The landscape should be nice. Yeah, you, you don't need to think about your, uh, all these criteria by your own. You can get in from a criteria guideline which someone already done the study. You just put it in a table and then you can analyze uh, by using your site observation through the photos. So you can see how the student, they split into by the zone and give the point, yeah. This is one type of the simple analysis, but yet, yet it is, uh, I think is impactful. Rather than you just uh, simply judge that this visual is good, what? Why? So the justification always need to be there, yeah? All right. And uh, this is on the walkability map. Mm, I think this one is familiar for you as well. So it's important in uh, urban studies. Uh, 
when you study on workability, you, you can put in some idea like, okay, uh, I can look at aspect of safety or security. Yeah. So when you found that um, when you do a site inventory itself, your self own experience is also very important. So what you have to judge is like uh, on the theory, you have to understand what are the criteria to make up on workability. Does it mention about safety, comfort, aesthetic, connectivity? So uh, you can select what is important at your site and you put it on the map. Always the data transform on the map, not only the writing. Of, of course, this, this one, I just take it part of the report, but for us, when you do a design, most important is on the map, yeah. Okay, so uh, as usual, students can come up with the potential and constraint map, they can analyze, and with the synthesis, yeah. Synthesis, not the suggestion is not always come just uh, on the uh, writing, the text, okay, I want to propose this, I want to suggest on this, you can show on the map. Hmm? I, I think you know this about this. All right, uh, I think basically uh, I have finished my input on this, the process of site, uh, the process of design for landscape architectures. Uh, I want to show you a project. Dr. Ruri, I will stop this slide here. Yeah? Okay, uh, this is my one of the final year students. Uh, he has just been graduated a few months ago. Okay, his project is uh, on dealing with uh, flood management, yeah? Uh, her, his site is at somewhere in Sabah, Borneo Island, yeah, Sabah? Okay, I, I just want to show you when you want to study on related flood and the landform okay uh, basically this student uh, he got this uh, map of the landform maybe not so clear all these cut sections he got it from the landform map and he do a profile studies I, i'm not sure whether you can see or not here can, can you all see did this part yeah can yeah yeah it's clear yeah uh, it's very important when you see that the topo map here with a range or maybe i have to zoom you can see here this is not the information that the student himself to measure but he get it the secondary information from the um the jabatan ukur yeah and then he also used the google map and overlay and plot here uh at first he tried to put in the layout of the contour but i cannot see it's hard to read so i say why not you put it in the here just the legend so we can see the dark color uh uh the, the highest uh, uh spot elevation maybe the color is different yeah this is easy for us to look at oh, yeah. and then he produced some of the uh cut section so we know that uh, the uh landform yeah okay his uh, inventory analysis board is simple. Yeah, um, for final year we don't expect that he has to do everything. He just do what inventory aspect that related to his projects. Yeah, but for lower year maybe sometimes we will ask you have to do everything. But for them no no need. Okay, so you see the drainage study is here with all the flood history. Oh sorry. Uh, as I said just now, uh, for, for landscape projects, we always have these like uh, accessibility studies, pedestrians, yeah. Because the project site is huge in uh, one like a uh, town area. That's why you can see the map very, very small, yeah. Uh, the, the, the profile study, yes. This depends on your creativity. How you study on the streets 
and also the profile of the site. So from your inventory analysis, you just pick the important that related to your site, which they have an issue or potential, and you have come out with a synthesis map, a recommendation, a recommendation or suggestion map. So when you suggest something, you have to show it on the map. You cannot say, okay, I would like to suggest A here, put it here, B on here. Your, your lecturers cannot imagine the space. So you everything put on the maps. Map show evidence, yeah, always. As uh, depend on the student creativity, so you can see what you want to show on the maps. And just now I say on concept. So once you have a good synthesis idea, you know what to do or the action taken for each part of the area on the map, then you can write a simple concept. Yeah. So this student, he, uh, he studied a theory on the biomimicry, mimic of the nature and bring back to the town. So he used the idea of a tree, uh, mangrove tree, because mangrove tree uh, is good in like uh, absorb like the water. So he mimicked the tree's uh, idea to put in, in uh, his design. Okay. So, so basically, uh, sorry. So basically you can see this is the conceptual map. Uh, now stay I notice uh, Dr. Ruli and uh, Ibu TV, uh, students uh, love to use uh, infographic. They, they want to show the activities. Like as I said just now, the landscape architectures when you pro, uh, plan, when you do a design, uh, activity program is very important. Because when you create a space making, activity should be there. They, they should be a users, yeah? A, a simple aims and objective written here. And this is a rational map. Um, Normally, I will ask the uh, upper year student or more senior student to do it, but the lower year, I don't expect because uh, you need to produce another map. But I will share this uh, in the next lecture, yeah, uh, Dr. Ruli, rational maps. Mm. Yeah, for landscape architecture student, they have to produce a conceptual map on the planting. Let's say this student, uh, he deal with a flood, right? So he has to list out the some plant related planting can help to dealing with the flood problem. Like there is a suggestion of rainwater garden, uh, gardens. So what are the suitable uh, plants that can help on this? Yeah. So come up with the plants list. Yeah. So you see the, the student, uh, sometimes you don't expect they come up with 10 bots on the design idea. This only two bots, but it's impactful. On the study. Okay, this is a final year student, yeah? I will share one on the second year student project. Okay, uh, this is one of the our second year student project in urban's uh, second year. Um, in in U UTM, normally uh, the first uh, three weeks or two weeks, you will ask students to do a uh, precedent study or literature review first. So every studio have uh, their own team. Uh, for this, uh, I think for this studio, they are using the team like uh, urban and suburban site. So, okay. So students basically, they will do a, Reference study. And okay, I will zoom in a little more. Okay, so this is about their site introductions, site issues, the design process. So students will, based on their creativity, how they, they uh, arrange the, all this. But this student, uh, his, his graphic is good. So though he's, he's in second year, yeah. So this is basically the master plan, that a landscape master plan, uh, the site that near to the mangrove and come out with the uh, uh, planting scheme. Uh, this is the must for our architecture, uh, landscape architecture students. 
And uh, the type of planting is just not the planting, but we have the solutions. And come up with some uh, illustrations. I, I believe that you have done the same thing as well. Hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, this is the detailed area that I mentioned. Okay, by looking at this is your master plan. Uh, we have the blow up area. The scale slightly smaller, maybe 200 to 500 scale. Okay. So you can see how the student uh, interpret their design process, conceptual idea. Yeah. So this is basically, we call it a detailed area plan uh, in uh, landscape architecture design. So when we come to the detailed area plan, uh, is you can see everything under the roof, which means 1.5 meter and below. So the basically you can see it's very clear on the pathway, uh, structures or under roof. If there is uh, any other uh, architectures building, then you have to show is the layout of the floor plan. No more roof plan, yeah. Yeah, okay, this is some uh, of the uh, softscape and hardscape idea. Some sections and illustrations. Uh, as I said just now, uh, students have to produce uh, detailed constructions. Uh, we, we, we have to train the students in lower year because if not come to the final year, they cannot produce a set of uh, construction drawing. Yeah? I think same like in architectures. Okay, I think basically uh, that's all what I want to share for today. Yeah, I will come back. I think they, they have few questions. Oh, many questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I will return to the, yeah, Ibu TV. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, Roughly, thank you very much uh, for the informative and interesting talk. Thank you. Very well. <laughs> now we come to question and answer sessions. Mm. Uh, there will be uh, maybe two or three sessions, and each session is for three questions. Uh, for uh, for the first, ah, as a reminder. Uh, you can still submit questions through <laughs> the question room okay. or you can click raise hand to ask the question okay uh i have list uh the questions okay uh, the first question is from buyuni she is a lecturer in uh, in uh, landscape architecture oh. uh, the question is uh what's the problem in the landscape architecture and what's the key to solve the problem Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. I, uh, yeah. Um, I will read uh, three questions for you, and okay. you will. Uh, yeah, you will answer it. Um, mm. From one, two, and three. Uh, right. Second uh, question is from students of architecture landscape, Belinda Sekar. Uh, is synthesis is synthesis data similar with design transformation? Mm. Okay, and the third question is from Devika. Uh, the question is, how can we as a student determine which data is important to input and when to stop analyzing the site in order not to overly putting main information? Okay, uh, I think the last one is very good question. So. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. Thank, thank you, you. Dr. Lee. Yes, okay, thank Have you, Ibu TV. All right. Um, I will answer the first questions. Uh, the, the main problem in in the landscape architectures and the key uh, to solve problem in uh, landscape architectures. Uh, these uh, questions is sound uh, general because when you ask uh, in landscape architecture problem, uh, by referring to the IFLA have identified the issues, we, we have dealing with a lot of global issues yeah you can say that uh, uh i just want to ask you whether you, you want to talk uh ask more on the design process or you are asking me the general issue in the landscape architecture okay can i know from you uh 
Uh, is it uh, from Ibu Yuni, is it? Uh, may, may I know you are asking the general common issues that happen in landscape architecture or in the design of the process? Which one? Okay, Bu Yuni. Uh, Ibu Yuni. <laughs> are you there? Uh, Dr. Lee? Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, what what the the key or the main uh, problem uh, that you can say uh, that we must uh, to do to solve the problem in uh, architecture landscape. Uh, you you mean at the site, yeah? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Um, boleh tak saya ah uh, yeah. Uh, you you can say uh, uh, what is the main or uh, the key to to solve the problem uh, to everything uh, to uh, every set i think uh, this is the uh, uni universal the universal uh, issues yes 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 okay all right i i, I try to understand your questions uh, Thank you for Ibu Yuni. Uh, okay. Um, as I said just now, just now uh, when you look at the IFLA, uh, IFLA is the International Federation Landscape Architecture. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we refer to the listed now, the current issues is like related like climate change on food security, on cultures. I think there is a common right now in the global issues, right? So when you talk about dealing with all these issues here, if let's say I want to put it in the studio projects. Uh, when I want to think about of giving students uh, of studio projects, yes, I do refer to the global issues as well. Because we need to be like up to date as well. We, we cannot like left behind. If we do something that is not current, uh, very recent issues, it's no point as well because um, everything is go on. So we have to lead our students to make sure that sensitive to the current issues. Correct or not? Betul tak? That's why when you talk about what are the key issues, it depends on the place as well. Maybe I believe like in Maybe like in Indonesia, you have your own local authority. Maybe you have your own identify certain issues, important key issues in your country. Maybe like in Malaysia, we have our own. But anyhow, you can also like scope whether you want to refer the global general and you, you scope down and then try to put it in, in your studio. Like me, I can give you example. I'm now uh, teaching a second year studio for semester. So I refer to a global issue on food security. Yes, I get the idea from there. And then, okay, my studio uh, topic, uh, studio uh, title is uh, Community Landscape and Park Design. It's a second year for semester. They are going to do something that deal with community and also the park. So the idea came in is like, okay, I got it, it's a food security issues. Okay, I have to fulfill the landscape design requirement. So what I think is, okay, I will suggest students to do on the urban farming as a park connector. So I combine the issues with think something that positive to overcome. So this is how I get the idea uh, what to, uh, what is the main current issue and put it in the studio studies? Boleh faham Ibu Yuni? Ke saya terlalu pergi jauh sangat? <laughs> Betul ke Ibu Yuni nak tanya yang ni? Ke tak? <laughs> Ibu Yuni masih di mute. Mute-nya dibuka dulu. Ke tidak? Okey, sudah. Kita angkap. Uh... Uh, maksud uh, Dr. Lee, uh, tapi mungkin uh, uh, I want to ask uh, apa lebih lanjut ke Buruli. <laughs> Ibu boleh pakai bahasa Indonesia? Oh, ya. Boleh, ya, saya, saya boleh faham. 
Tanya baru lihat. Oke, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, I will answer the second questions. Uh, okay. The second question is more like the synthesis data similar to design transformation. Okay. All right. Uh, from Belinda, right? Um, okay, Belinda, your questions. Uh, synthesis data similar to with design transformation. Uh, it is not similar. Yeah. Synthesis i uh, data or synthesis idea is come from your site inventory and analysis. Is synthesis means here is like recommendation and suggestion. When you talk about design transformation, it's already in another stage. It's already in the conceptual stage. Uh, can you get me? Okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Uh, the third questions just now. Um, Uh, oh, from, okay. Sorry? Devika, uh, the right? The third question is from Devika. How Devika, can we, okay. as a student, determine which data is important to ah, input okay. and we just stop analyzing the site in order not to overly putting main information? Okay. Thank okay, you. Have a please. All right. Thank you. Yes. Uh, th this this is very important question. It's, it's, just, it's just not interesting. Uh, yes. Um, where to stop uh, to analyze? is depend on your topic okay uh, let's talk about if uh, you have a topic uh, dealing with one master plan uh, your start uh, your project is more on i give you as an example yeah if let's say your project is more on you have a site on urban you are talking on the walkability issues just is your main focus so your inventory analysis you focus only on the walkability part because when you understand on the theory on workability, you will find that they have few important attributes when we talk about workability, which you will touch on safety, comfort, security, aesthetic, or visual. So all of these aspects you can look at and become your inventory uh, point or aspects. So from there, you can control. Doesn't mean that you have to, if there is a 10 aspect, you have to do then everything. You, you have to sort it by your own. So you will see which one is important, which aspect is more significant in your study. Yeah. But basically, if you do on the landscape architectures, uh, site inventory analysis, uh, normally we will do on the accessibility, safety, uh, pedestrians, uh, circulations, and experience, legibility, all, all this is a uh, pass for us. So you can refer to only the significant one. No need to cover everything. Let's say if you talk about walkability, maybe you no need to do on something that out of the walkability. Yeah. Um, maybe let's say you no need to do on the sound. It is just an additional. If your design will need to dealing with the human comfort, maybe you can put in on sound. Yeah. But for outdoor, uh, thermal comfort is important. Yeah. For study. You, you can decide by your own, but just select, be selective, the important one. Yeah. Am I answer your questions, uh, Devika? Uh, yes, thank you, Miss. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, briefly, we are going to the second session. Uh, we have so many questions in the chat room. Okay. Ah uh, yeah, <laughs> I will. Alright, right. I try to answer. Yeah, I will read three questions uh, for this session. The first question is from Adam Maulana. I would like to ask a question uh, based on what I've seen on the landscape synthesis. There were proposed over bridges and changes to the landscape. Do all the changes have to be on the inside of the assigned site, or can you just propose it to the governments? and or officials and have the changes outside of the assigned site. Oh, okay. Uh, can I you answer? Get it? Oh, yes. You get it, Prof? Yes, yes, yes. I, th I think okay. I can read this. Okay. Uh, the second uh, question is from Alifina. Uh, as a student like us, 
what are the common mistakes we usually do on analyzing the site? And also what things we should avoid while analyzing the site? Thank you. Uh, Prof, uh, you get it? Yes, got it. Okay, okay. Uh, the third question uh, in Bahasa Melayu, Bahasa Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, saya menanya, uh, menanyakan perihal landscaping dalam skala mikro. Oke, okay, uh, uh, Dion, uh, from her Dion, uh, data apa saja yang cukup untuk menggambarkan landscape yang akan dibangun dan apakah ada hal yang lebih harus didetailkan dalam kita mengolah landscape dalam skala mikro? Uh, you get it properly or I need to translate it for you? I think you have to help me to translate this. Oke, okay. uh, <laughs> Uh, what data can uh, we describe uh, to uh, describe the landscape to be developed and um, uh, what uh, what more should be detailed in mounting on a micro scale I think so you get it micro scale micro scale and landscape architecture uh, What the thing uh, we should detailed to um, to uh, oh. organize the landscape okay. in micro scale. Okay, I think I got okay. it. You, micro scale, yeah. I think is the detail area. Okay, you get it. Uh, yeah, I got it. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, we already have three questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Have a please. All right. I think I will answer the for Adam Maulana, right? Uh, your questions is on the proposed overbridge and changes to the landscape. Um, okay, you, you have a good questions here also that the propose to the government or officials and have the changes outside or outside the site. Okay, all right. When you do a design, okay, uh, when you do a site inventory analysis, a client brief is very important, yeah? Which means all of your project, you have a client. It is not your own project. <laughs> that's, that's why a guideline here to help you is from a client brief, which means that you only already know what is your limitation. If you have a site with a government requirement that, okay, you can build anything here with more than maybe uh, how many meters high, with uh, with the certain skyline. If you have this guideline or approval from the government, so you can do anything at your site, no problem. C can you understand or not? So for, for me, I think you can propose overbridge for the landscape, doesn't matter, but make, have to bear into the mind, make sure you fulfill the guideline in the context of urban area, let's say it happened in urban, Make sure if not clash with your uh, client brief that what they want at your site requirements. And when you deal with the landscape, make sure the skyline, the scale is in proportions. Yeah, it is not disturbed to others. Yeah, because when come with the design, it will give impact. Yeah, whether the impact is on the environment, the people and the place, and maybe also the wildlife. If you have something uh, suddenly is a uh, giant or very odd in urban area, uh, in the context of urban or natural area, th this is something that you have to consider. Yes. That is why when you do a site inventory analysis, the contextual study is a must in, in your asking topic of this. I, I, am I answer you, uh, Malana? Yes, yes, you can do. You can do, uh, but you have to check uh, the requirement from the government, the guideline, and also the context. Yes. All right. Thank you, Miss. You're welcome. Okay. I will go to the next uh, questions from uh, Alifina. Yeah. Um, he's asking the common mistake usually do on the analysis. What to avoid? Okay, uh, as I said just now, um, student always like misunderstand. When they do inventory, they thought they already complete analysis. I, uh, I think common, yeah? <laughs> when they collect a lot of data, very good. They have a lot, 10 maybe aspect they collect, they put. Okay, for me, 
this student only complete inventory, but not yet analysis. So uh, when analysis part is more detailed, you have to give a judgment, good or bad, right? Uh, uh, good or bad, the condition is good, why? So all of this you have to explain on the map, not only the written text here. Yeah? So when you say here to avoid analysis, uh, what things that we should avoid with analyzing the site? Uh, for me, it's nothing to avoid, but it's how do you like plan to analyze all the steps that you're going to plan. Tak ada benda yang you have to like avoid. Yeah, no, no, no mistake for analysis. It depends how do you start your inventory only. Mm -mm. Is it okay, uh, Alfina? Yes, miss. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Okay, the, the last question, I think I will summarize uh, what I understand on just now you mentioned uh, landscaping and the uh, micro scale. Okay, micro scale, which means uh, it's bigger. You can see larger, yeah. For landscape micro scale is our uh, is a detail area for us. What you can see is more detail. Let's say uh, in scale one to two hundred or one hundred, you can see the pathway with selected material. If in master plan you cannot see, you just see a pathway with two lines, correct? With Two lines, yeah. But in the macro scale, you can see the material, and then you can see the curb, you can see the plant, the shrubs next to the pathway. So this is what the macro scale of the landscape plan that you have to show. Yeah. Uh, this is only one example, which means that everything have to detail up in the uh, micro scale level. Dion, is that uh, I answer your questions? Um, what I mean about mm. micro scale is, mm. but when we are landscaping in mm. some sites, not not on the city Plan. skyline, or yes, what I mean is that when we mm. landscaping on the sites, um, not big, maybe about four hundred. Uh, meter squares, and that's it. What I mean about micro scale is that four hundred meter square only. Yes, not oh. not the city, not not like on the city, but like on the village or something like that. Your site is where in the village or urban or suburban? On the village, not urban sites. Okay, the the space is the site is a public area or a green area. You have to check the status of the land first. Oh, <clears throat> what I have it now, uh, what I have it now is a green area. Oh, a green area. Okay. Yeah. If let's say a green area, it can become a. Uh, okay, it doesn't matter. Follow. Okay, skill for me is doesn't matter. Is how complex of your uh site. The complexity means here. Uh you have to look at is the context of your site. Uh, let's say your site, 400 meters square, that's it located very close to the community, the government building, or natural landscape area, like a river or forest. So try to look at which one is the potential for you, yeah? Before you decide what you're going to do for your site. Are you going to develop a... a recreational area or the community park or neighborhood park. This doesn't matter for me. You see how is your context because when you design a place, a space is to for the activity, the surrounding. Because uh, it's not something like the building, right? When you design a landscape, you must to design a program. Someone have to use your place. This is how you create a space making. C can you understand? No problem, you can design, though the size is small, 400 meters square. Okay, okay. But mm. what are the data that we have to present? Is there uh, some more detailed data, like like the, the neighbor or the, the animal lives on the sites right now? Something like that. 
Yes. Is there any detailed data? Yes. Uh, okay. I, I try to understand your questions. Yeah. Let's say, as I say just now, if, if your area is like in rural, the surrounding area, maybe 80% is still very natural, like still in like a secondary forest. Yes, you, you have to do a site inventory analysis on the uh, existing vegetations, the wildlife studies, and the uh, reserve of the green area. Yes, that is a must. Because why? Um, when what the design that you expect to come out have to harmonize with the surrounding uh, context. You cannot like suddenly that your project will give the negative impact or harmful to the existing surrounding. Yes, you can do the study on that, the wildlife and vegetations. Mm -mm. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Doctor. All right, Dr. all right, yes. all right Jian. Okay, thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, let's. Uh, you have like go, let's, several questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's move to the. Uh, that's um, sorry. I have a trouble with connection here. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, probably before we go uh, to the third session, I want to um, I want to introduce you my friends. Oh. Ibu Dimitra is here. She is from uh, the uh, Jakarta government. Oh, hello, uh, Ibu Devita. Eh, Devika, uh, sorry. Dimitra. Uh, yeah. Devita, sorry. Yeah. She's with us right now, uh, and uh, we are so happy to having uh, her, uh, to having uh, her here. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go to the third session uh, from Aldi Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, from Aldi Muhammad. The question is. Um, what are we working on right now is to analyze a small landscape that will be used for a small scale of buildings such as house or small store. In that case, we have some difficulty to get some information such as detailed elevation and noise compared when it's a large scale landscape. So according to you, what is the best move to analyze that kind of problem? Thank you. Uh, get it? Okay, I, I, I'm trying to understand like uh, when he say that difficult to get the information as a yes. detailed elevation and noise and compared when the large scale of... Okay, I'm, I'm not so understand like uh, what that is. He means that uh, a detailed elevation compared to the large scale landscape. Okay, maybe uh, Aldi will um, uh, okay, can directly you... ask yeah, it. Ask, you. Yes, yes. Let's go to the second <laughs> questions. Okay. <laughs> I would like to ask, how is the method to create a good counter map? And can it be done digitally? And what equipment is needed to get the optimal counter map? Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. And the third question is from Ibu Ruli. Mm -hmm. uh, Definitely, in the reality, it seems landscape construction also is the lowest prior priority of all the subcontractors when it comes to conflicts and value engineering. How is your opinion about this? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Hmm. okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is it okay if uh, if we uh, have one more question? Yes. Okay. Uh, the last question is from Rahayu. How important tough grass in architectural landscape as long oh okay tough class okay. Uh, maybe i can adding uh, dr rahayu is uh, a lecturer from the agriculture okay. of oh. university of uh, he is also he is uh, he is also the pic of the bromo forest so maybe in the future we can have collaboration to make the master plan of the bromo forest uh, universitas bless maret thank you para okay. you to attending oh. our lectures okay <laughs> Thank, thank you for explaining on this. All right. Okay. I think uh, do Aldi want to say something to to explain your questions? Uh, okay. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yes. What I what I mean from my my question is when when we uh, analyze such a small scale of area, it's kind of difficult to get some detailed information about um, 
uh, like elevation and noises. But when we uh, analyze lar like large site, like large area, is like kind of easy to get some some of that information. So how how what is the best move to analyze uh, something like elevation and noises when it came to a small scale of site like that? Okay, all right. Uh, when you mentioned uh, elevation here, which means uh, is that the view of the site itself? Uh, it's or, the... or spot elevation. Yeah, it, uh, spot elevation. So it's like the contour of the oh, site. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, yes. Uh, if you are uh, your site in the small scale, uh, if you apply on the contour, it doesn't give an impact. Mm. So just now, when I, I purposely show this, uh, my second year students' uh, works, uh, at least you have to get like few spot of elevation. You can have a contour, but it depends on If your slide is just a uh, normal without a, a different of spot level, you can not see much different. You can understand what I mean. Right? Yeah, I understand. If, so what you can do is like try to get Few spot elevation from your Google map, right? Mm. And then come out with a cut section that this is, will help you. If you want to do contour, it doesn't give much impact if your site is not uh, uh, to show if your site is not this type, like have a different uh, significant topography. Mm -mm. Mm. Did this happen to like most of my final year student projects uh, where they have to produce a, a plan on topography plan. Some of them they cannot come out with because of the site, yes. But at least you can try is get some spot elevations from the Google map and come out with your simple section. I think that this can help you. Yeah, because when you do in uh, your architecture's plan, you have to show a uh, spot elevation as well, right? The level. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anything else that you want to know? Am I answer uh, you? Yeah, that's answering my question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Audi? Uh, I, think, I think that's enough. <laughs> All right, but just now you mentioned about noise compare. Uh, you have to think again, does the noise is the main issues? If not the main issues that you no need to take it as a important uh, aspect to look at. Maybe there are some other factor is much more important that you have to look. Always look at the site, the strength itself. We cannot force our site with the issues, which is something that I call it bias here. Yeah? We, we have to look at our site, like a friend said, something is good, potential. Uh, don't just eat too fast, but make it like, see what is good for the site and show it with evidence. Because uh, when students ask that, um, if you can get the evidence, means you are in the right way showing your site inventory. If you just something that based on what you think, sometimes you cannot come out with the inventory analysis, means sometimes that you are judging by your own without evidence. Mm -mm. Mm. Okay, Adi? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Lee. All uh, okay. right, you're welcome. Okay, I will ask, uh, answer uh, questions from uh, Dr. Rudy, yeah? <laughs> Is it? Oh, no. Uh, about the contour, yeah. Okay, sorry. From, uh, from, from Abinaya. Abinaya, all right. Abinaya. A, a method to create a, a contour map and to be done in digital. Yes, uh, okay. And the equipment that needs, all right. Mm. If, if you are working in a group work, uh, for survey a contour, my, my suggestion for you, you can use a GPS to get the spot, uh, of, to get a spot as a raw data to each level if you are working in the group, if you have the tools of GPS, yeah. Uh, all can they be done in digital because you can use a GIS software to come up with the map. Let's say you don't have these tools and you do not know on the GIS, doesn't matter. 
you can try on as simple as the Google Map and then digitize the uh, contour line and put it on the AutoCAD. Yes, I think that, that is the simple way to help you. Yeah. Am I answer your questions, Abhinaya? Yes, it already answered my question. Thank you, doctor. All right. Okay. Um, Ibu Ruri's questions. Okay. Oh, Ibu Ruri, the, the tough questions. <laughs> they said constructions is also lowest priority of all subcontractors. It's come to conflict when the value of engineering. Okay, Ibu Ruri, can, can you explain to me? Yes. What do you mean here, the lowest priority of all the subcontractors? <laughs> yeah, because the issue is um, when we are um, in the reality fact, the, uh, the landscape architecture is become the Second, uh, second priority compared to the mm. building itself or compared oh. to the and everything. Mm. Uh, the system and then the landscape sometimes it's become mm. the less priority. Can uh, how how you deal with this with your students also to convince them that uh, well this is important also is part of the system. Yes. Uh, okay. Now I understand your questions. Yes. In reality, there's this always a common happen in I think uh all wells all over the world, right? Um, when we talk about this, uh, okay, when you look at in uh, US uh, practice here, yeah, in overseas, right? They always have the landscape architectures planning come in first before architectures. Yeah, but, but I think, I believe in Southeast Asia, our architects uh, is more like, have, uh, they, they got this, the, they are the main like project reader most of the projects. So they, they come in with the building and then the landscape become the secondary. But I believe now, now um, many people, uh, I mean, uh, not only professions, as well as all the layman people, the common people, they now, they already start to think about the value of the landscape. Yes, I will give you an example like in Malaysia, some of the high-end housing area like Satya Tropicals, they, they are using the landscape as a selling point to increase their value of the property. Yes, so some of the developer, they have uh, the, the sense like they were putting landscape as a priority, but the building come later. Yes. For me, if you ask me the opinion, yes, I think they, they should is, uh, work together. We, we don't put it uh, landscape later because if landscape later, we, we have to suit to the architect. Maybe the environment is not what we expect, that what we want from the design. Hmm. Sure, the conflict is there, but <laughs> it's always like a chicken and egg. So we always like have to deal, <laughs> yes, Ibururi. So yeah, it is much a lot that we have to discuss on this topic. But for me, I think the landscape should be come first because we plan for the environment. Landscape is not just about tree. Yes, we, we bring the ecosystem to the uh, living environment. We bring the ecosystem, uh, balance the ecosystem to the urban and also uh, the uh, suburban or rural area. Okay, okay. so the, the ecosystem is the most part, the important things to yes. support the building, yeah? Yes. Thank you very much. We, yeah, because why? Uh, we, we are now very important when we talk about global issues. Everything that uh, we uh, propose something to the human, well-being is very important. I believe that um, for us, not right now, human, it's not demand just, okay, we have to stay in a very good, only inside a house, but we need a good environment. I think now that is much more important, the environment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. To achieve our well-being. Okay, you Dr. Ruri. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Um, I think the last question from come from the uh, Ibu, Ibu Rahayu. Rahayu, right? How important the Dr. Dr. Rahayu. <laughs> Ah. Yeah. Oh. He is a male. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry, I am. 
Thank you very much. Okay, Pak. Pak Raya, you. Sorry. How important the turf grass in architecture landscape as long? For me, the importance, I cannot say like, okay, what aspect that you want important? Does it important for aesthetic or important of function of the landscape? Because when you talk about turf grass, it need a maintenance as well, right? That's why it's have you have to see like what aspect does you want to talk about on aesthetic landscape? Yes, turf grass is important. Yeah, but usually in the surface we have to tie for quality. Uh, seems like artistic quality and also function quality for sport and everything yes. like that. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. And nowadays, uh, maybe. I'm sorry, mm. my driving. Oh no, no problem. <laughs> Uh, because nowadays, like, do uh landscape have dealing a lot with the flood projects? So when you talk about turf grass, uh, turf grass, I think that this something help. But grass is not much on one help on the uh flood. More, but shrub is better. It is the, it depend on what you are going to deal for this. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Yeah. I think I have answered all the questions. Yeah, uh, thank you very yeah, much. Thank you, thank you, Pak. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lee. I think the time is up. Um, so we 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 have to we have to close our session. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. Uh, uh, I want to um, hear from uh, Prof. Uh, Lee about um, your uh, your closing oh, okay. statement. All right. Um, okay. okay, I want to just uh. Uh, do some wrap up for today's sessions. Uh, wrap up from uh, okay, make it simple when for the landscape architecture design process. Uh, what you want to uh, what you want to plan for study for your site is all come from you. Is how you understand your site. Don't make it uh the site inventory analysis is something like, okay, very technical, like engineering, no. Make it simple in the architecture field or landscape architecture field of study. Choose what aspect that's significant. The aspect can come from the site issues or the potential of the site itself. So make it simple. When one you have this, you can proceed from the site inventory analysis and then your site uh, synthesis and come out with a good um, master plan or the design. Because for me, uh, if you are not serious on doing site inventory analysis, your master plan idea is not good because you don't know what your site is. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Prof. Lee. Okay, uh, I'm trying to wrap up uh, our our um, discuss uh, session today. Uh, uh, designing outdoor spaces for a high-end, uh, multifamily or mixed-use development project uh, should be an should be an exciting and collaborative process. Yes. I think so, but. Uh, doing things the right way uh, and not rushing through the um, the process is crucial to make sure uh, we are getting what uh, we truly want out uh, of our investment. So the design process that uh, Dr. Lee explained uh, describes how landscape architectural projects are structured in terms of the key stage uh, inventory analysis and synthesis that form important milestones. Uh, 
as a student, as you better understand this process, uh, you will be able to take action to know you are setting out on the right track. I think so. Yes, Ibu TV. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I'm so uh, thankful for uh, Prof. Lee for coming uh, and join with us today. Uh, thank you for uh, the lecturer of uh, landscape architecture, Ibu Yuni, Ibu Dia, uh, Ibu Ruli. Uh, and thank you for, uh, for uh, attending today webinar uh, for the students and for, um, we have uh, Bapak Agung Tewe in our channel YouTube. Oh. She is a mechanical uh, engineering lecturer. Thank you for attending. <laughs> okay. Members of, of Student uh, Jepang, uh, PSJ. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, the presentation will be beneficial for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we uh, we end this uh, we end this event, uh, I would like uh, uh, all the attendants um, to turn on the camera, and we have to take a family picture. Oh. Okay. Yeah, also give the information, but TV adding information more that uh, the lecture of uh, Dr. Lee will have another series. It's going to be on Monday, October 26th uh, on the class of uh, Architecture Studio 6. And also the next month on Wednesday and November 4th, uh, we also still have one class lecture with Dr. Lee. And that's a more advanced, uh, more fruitful for the discussion. So yeah. Please wait, uh, we will give the more information in the Instagram of URDC Labo or Instagram of uh, ONS Architecture uh, so we can share in the social media. So have a please the students to open the video, uh, the camera, <laughs> because we need to have the family pictures together. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. okay, nice. Thank nice. you. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Lee. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for all. Yeah. I, I try to make the family picture, yeah, but we, okay, are you ready? It's already uh, 96. Okay, first, uh, on the first screen, yeah? One, two, three, give the good uh, smile. And then next, on the second layers. Okay, open all. Thank you, one, two, three. Okay. Enggak uh, usah sisiran juga nggak apa-apa gitu ya. Nggak <laughs> dinilai gitu ya, oke. Okay. Satu, dua, tiga. Masih ada satu lagi. Next. Uh, paling akhir ya. Terima kasih. Satu, dua, tiga, cheese. Oke, okay, terima kasih adik-adik. Oke. Okay. Baiklah adik-adik. Bu Tiwi, silahkan di closing. <laughs> Thank you uh, all. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, if you have any further questions, maybe you can write an email or yeah to me. Ah, so yeah, to, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I know your email yes. uh, in Dr. Lee, the address? Yes, I, I can write here in the check box. Okay. Hmm. Uh, also, the students, don't forget to fill the attendance uh, ini ya, uh, daftar hadir ya, mm -hmm. karena akan ada sertifikatnya. Jadi ini International Guest Lecture Series. Jadi jangan lupa untuk mengisi daftar hadir di uh, kolom chat juga. Oke, okay. uh, Dr. Lee uh, email ada di lylie at utm.my. Ini uh, Dr. Lee uh, email ya. Yeah, yeah. Oke, okay. terima kasih. Okay, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, have a great yeah. day. Bye-bye.